Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. How do you do, my friend? Welcome to the broadcast today. It's a delight to be with you. Thanks for joining us. And I say that in a very particular way. If this happens to be your very first time to be part of our broadcast, thank you in a particular way for joining us. Right now, my Bible is sitting open to the first chapter of 1 John. If you can, reach over, pick up your own copy of the Word of God and join me there. 1 John, please, chapter 1. I'm going to begin to read at verse 6 here in just a a moment. In a moment, I'm also going to be encouraging you to get some gospel tracts from us. Now, a gospel tract is an evangelism tool. It's a tool to tell somebody the gospel, the good news of salvation. The ministry here of this radio program is just the radio arm of a larger ministry. As my announcer said, it's called Bible Tracks Incorporated. We are in our 81st year of publishing gospel tracks. We publish them in different languages, and for 81 years, we've been giving them away all over the world. We're able to do that because so many of God's people come alongside of us and treat us like we are one of their missionaries, and they also share in the the joys and the rewards of seeing countless things. Thousands of people come to Christ every year. I'm going to be encouraging you to get some gospel tracts from us here in just a moment. But first of all, I want us to get ready for the Bible study this way. You remember, I am sure, Jesus is charged to not judge one another. That That's found in the Sermon on the Mount. And that charge to not judge has been certainly misused an awful lot over the centuries. You and I cannot judge the unseen thoughts, the unseen attitudes that we find in people's lives. But we can, we can judge, we can critique the acts that they do that we can see. I'm saying this because our study here the last few days from 1 John chapter 1 is going to deal with this whole idea of judging because this little book was written to help us judge or critique not others but ourselves. You see, you and I do know. We know exactly what we are thinking and feeling. We do know our heart attitude. And all the while, you and I can fool other people by our outside demeanor, but we know exactly what's going on on the inside of our own hearts. Now, first, John was given to help us honestly honestly assess whether we are in the faith or not. It's not about judging other people's standing with God. It's about evaluating our own standing. In the first century church meetings, there were both true and false believers that were part of it. John had heard at least three lies told by people who were calling themselves a Christian. These three lies are still around today. Today, we begin to find out if we are telling ourselves lies or not. Get your Bible. Get something to write on. Join me in 1 John chapter 1. I have one of those gospel tracts in front of me right now. Again, a tract is a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. This gospel tract is entitled, Seriously Speaking. Seriously Speaking. That really fits in well with our study today. There is a subtitle to this tract. It says this, You May Be Sincerely Wrong. Seriously Speaking, You May Be sincerely wrong. A lot of people think they're going to heaven because they're basing their entrance on some sincere thought process that they heard at church, that their grandma told them or whatever, but they've never come to grips with God's plan of salvation, which is by surrendering your sinful heart through repentance and by faith receiving Christ as Savior. You got to do that to be born again, to have an entrance into heaven. Friend, here's a great gospel tool to hand out, to give away in so many settings. 
Again, seriously speaking, at the end of the program, my announcer will give our contact information. Give us, please, your name and mailing address. We'll send you a complete sample packet containing one each of all of our English gospel tracks. This one will be in that. You can go to our website, which is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. If your Bible is open, 1 John chapter 1, beginning at verse 6, we find these words. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. That's the passage. Come with me, please. Now, verse 5 of the chapter identifies what I have called the foundational truth of having fellowship with God. And that truth is this. In verse 5, God is light. God is holy, and in him is no darkness at all. So to be in fellowship with God, we must be confronting ourselves, our life, with God's holiness and our lack of it, and thus we need a holy Savior to enable us to make us holy. He alone, God alone, Christ alone can make us holy by dealing with our sin. Now, though, in verses 6 through 10, John identifies those three false statements. They were being made by church attenders then, and they're still being made by church attenders today. Those three statements all begin with the words, if we say, and you'll find them at the beginning of verse 6, verse 8, and verse 10. They each begin a false statement, and you and I are to examine our own hearts and see if we, you and I, are making any of these statements. If we are, then we are either in a non-relationship with God, we have not God as Savior, we're unsaved, or we have a severely messed up relationship with God. So let's deal with them. Here's the first false statement, verse 6. If we say that we have fellowship with him, with God, and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. If this describes you or me, we are a pretend believer. We are not born again. I want you to see four key ideas based upon verse six. Are you ready? Jot them down. Idea number one is this. This walking in darkness is not referring here to just a one-time act, but a life pattern. I'm going to say that again. When verse 6 talks about walking in darkness, it's not talking about a one-time act. It's talking about a life pattern. Now, you and I can identify a whole arm's length long list of New Testament believers who sinned, but their sins were not a pattern. It was an individual act for which they had to confess and gain forgiveness. Believers can sin. You know it, I know it. But a consistent life pattern of unholy living for which we do not want to change, that's a lie. That is an absolute lie according to the verse. That's idea number one. Here's idea number two from verse 6. God describes this unholy life pattern bluntly and clearly. I'm going to say that again. God describes this unholy life pattern bluntly and clearly. And here's what God says. Two words. We lie. We lie. We are living a lie. And that lie is a, a, is a real issue. We say we are saved, but we live a consistent life, an unholy life. And that is saying a lie. Idea number three is this. God describes this unholy life pattern negatively, still in verse 6. God describes this unholy life pattern negatively. Again, verse 6 says this, we do not the truth. We do not the truth. Not only are our words a lie when we claim to be a true believer, but our deeds, what we do, they are not true. It is not in line with God's truth. 
God gave Moses the law. He gave the Ten Commandments and the whole law so that the Jewish people could measure. They could evaluate their life practices to see if they're in a right relationship with God. The law, though, was a schoolmaster, and its job was to bring us to Christ. When a person is truly born again, they're measuring themselves no longer by the law, but by Jesus Growing believers, true believers are going to grow and they're going to look more and more like Jesus. But when somebody lives consistently in a life pattern that is contrary to Jesus, they are not doing the truth. Their deeds identify their true status. Idea number four is this. The one who makes this kind of a statement is a false believer. They are still lost in their sin. Oh, When a person says, I'm a believer, but lives a unholy life, and that's their life pattern, they may feel very spiritual, and they may get all emotional when they go to church. They may enjoy their time around other people who are true believers, but they are not dealing here. You and I are not dealing here with our emotional response. We are not dealing with how enlightened and spiritual we might sense ourselves to be when we're at church. What we're dealing with here is holiness. Not yours, not mine, not your churches. We're dealing with God's holiness and his call to holiness that comes with his call to salvation. You see, sinners, sinners live in the kingdom of darkness, the Bible says, and they do the kinds of deeds that are part of the dark kingdom. But at salvation, a person is transferred out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light, the kingdom of God's dear son. They now want to be transferred to this new kingdom because the sinner saw their sin. They saw their unholiness for exactly what it was. They wanted freedom now from sin's condemnation, their guiltiness before a holy God. And they want freedom from the sin's hold on them. They want Jesus, the Savior, to cleanse their sin and alter the way they live. They don't want to live in sin anymore. Why? Sin nailed Christ to the cross, and they're broken over that. Tell me, friend, are you a believer? Do you want heaven later on in life? Do you want to look forward to heaven? Have have your life preserver called salvation. Do you want that, but then in the meantime, do you want to live a sinful life? life, an unholy life. Is that you? If it is you, then verse 6 says you are lying to you, you're lying to others, and you don't have a Savior. Verse 6 is very, very simple. If we say, if we're talking, that we are in fellowship with the Holy God, but we're walking consistently in an unholiness and darkness, we're lying. We don't do the truth. Friend, you may be listening today, and you're a church member. You may be a deacon. You may be a pastor of a church. You may be a Sunday school teacher. I know my wife. She got saved after she'd been Sunday school teacher for a long time. She got saved in her 20s, but she'd been teaching the primary girls for a long time. She was pretty good at it as long as she had the lesson book. But one day she came to grips with the fact that she was morally upright, but her sin and her heart pattern was wicked, and she made Christ her Savior. Why don't you do that today? Amen. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.